All right, substituent effects on acidity. Um, we've talked about this a little bit also, um, but it's kind of saying what, what happens if you start substituting your hydrogens. Okay, so if you just have regular acetic acid, we'll have a benchmark of 4.7 of 4. Let's say we now take one of these hydrogens off and replace it with a chlorine. Chlorine is more electronegative. Okay, so that means it withdraws electrons away. So by doing that, by the inductive effect, okay, it's going to stabilize the O minus more. Once this hydrogen pops off, you get a negative charge. That negative charge is not only stabilized through resonance, but the chlorine is actually withdrawing the electrons away. So it's actually being spread over these carbons through the inductive effect. So because of that, you get a drop in pKa. It's more acidic. Now, if you get a second chlorine, okay, you can imagine it's twice the effect. If you now have trichloroacetic acid, okay, um, you drastically drop. So tri tr trichloroacetic acid is ten to the thir third, ten to the fourth times more acidic than if you just have acetate. Okay. Also, how close the chlorine is to the carboxylic acid. The closer it gets, all right, the more acidic. So if chlorine goes on the um, uh, on the beta carbon or the third carbon, you get a drop in pKa. If the chlorine goes right next door, you get another drop in pKa. Same reason, inductive effect. The chlorine has a much larger inductive effect. Effect. That's a double effect, right? Because it's the inductive effect effect. All right. Uh, as the chlorine gets closer to the carboxylic acid, all right. The further away the chlorine is, the less the effect. All right. So the magnitude of the substituent effect depends on its distance from the car the carboxyl group. Okay, aromatic acid, same type of thing. Um, <coughs> uh, methoxy is a donating group. Okay, nitros are withdrawing groups. So also you have more resonance structures. R remember if from the aromatic chapter, these electrons actually will go in here and actually kind of do a resonance structure. So notice the, the, the electron flow is going towards the carboxylic acid. Okay, the nitro, remember, that's what the nitro looks like. In this case, the electrons are popping down, are going towards the nitro, away from the carboxylic acid. So once you have a negative charge, it kind of that negative charge is spread over to a larger area. Well, here the electro, it's not the, the, the electrons are pumping more into it, so less acidic. Okay. Uh, as you put nitro, it gets more acidic. Notice the ortho paras are lower. Okay, you might be thinking, well, why is the ortho much more acidic? Well, now you actually have this effect that they don't really talk about it, but when you start having ortho substituents that have lone pairs, you can actually hydrogen bond now with this hydrogen, and by doing that, it stabilizes uh, the minus charge even more. Okay, um, actually, what happens? Let's kind of do this. Let's draw out the, the whole thing. So O minus carbonyl, you have an N with a plus charge. Remember, your nitrogen has a plus charge right there, O minus. Um, you actually have an effect right there. Notice it's a six-membered ring. We've talked about six-membered rings in nature are very stable. One, two, three, four. Actually, it's a five-member ring, sorry. Five-member rings are also as stable in nature. Um, but you kind of have this kind of effect. So not only do you have this stabilization of the resonance, but you have the stabilization of this positively attracted uh, nitrogen. So that's even bringing it down a little bit more. But pretty much the ortho paras, um, the electron withdrawing groups, uh, increase acidity, especially the ortho para. And here's just kind of to show you more effects by adding different groups. All right, this one of the strongest uh, organic acids is is a uh, trifluoroacetic acid. So we saw that trichloro was 0.64. Well, fluorine's more electronegative, so you so the pKa is much lower. Okay, here's one chlorine. Here's a nitro. Here's a cyanide. Here's an extra carbon with a fluorine. So you can see we're increasing in pKa's depending on the group. Um, but you see as as you start changing the groups, you can increase the acidity. Okay. Deprotonation, pretty straightforward. Oop, sorry, we've seen this. Um, you have some sort of strong base, plucks off the acid, forms the acetate ion. I'm sorry, the um, acid salt. Okay, so the hydroxide ion completely deprotonates the acid, 
to form the carboxylate salt. Okay, and here's just an example. Um, if you take that salt and then add acid back to it, you can re-acidify. Okay, so adding a strong acid like HDL regenerates the carboxylic acid. All right, these little hints. Let's see, an aqueous solution and acid will be mostly disassociated if the pH is above the acid's pKa, um, and mostly undisassociated if the pH is below the pKa. So basically, if you're in a basic environment, obviously the base is going to pluck off the acidic protons, and you'll be disassociated. If you're in a very acidic environment, it's going to stay protonated. So that's kind of what they're telling you. you. You kind of already know that. All right, naming carboxylic acid salts. So I'm not going to really stress this too much. Okay, let's kind of kind of look at them. But you replace the oic with an eight. Okay, so instead of pentanoic, it's pentanoate. Okay, um, so it's lithium pentanoate. Um, that's all the trick is. Um, uh, if you take benzoic acid, this is kind of a real life example, and add sodium hydroxide, which we just saw, you get, well, let me write it, okay, and what do you think the name is based on what we just learned? Okay, that's benzoic acid, so it's sodium benzoate. This is a very common additive in food. Um, it helps food stay fresh. It's kind of a, uh, a preservative. Okay, so if you look on the back of foods, you might actually see that quite a bit. So it acts as a preservative. As soon as it hits your stomach, your stomach is in an acid environment, um, it acidifies that and it turns into benzoic acid. So sometimes you're eating benzoic acid. Don't even realize it. Properties of acid salts. They're solids because it's an ionic salt. They have no odor. Um, the, car the carboxylate salts of sodium, potassium, lithium, and ammonium are soluble in water. In Gen Chem, you learned the solubility rules, and you've learned that if anything has these four cations, are usually always soluble, 100% soluble uh, in water. Soap is a soluble sodium salt of the long chain fatty acid. We're going to talk a little bit about salts, uh, soaps in a second. And salts can be formed by the reaction of an acid with sodium bicarbonate releasing CO2. Uh, last semester we did a lab where we did the separation of a three component mixture and one of them was an acid, a carboxylic acid, and we used sodium uh, bicarbonate to um, bring that carboxylic acid into the aqueous layer, if you remember. So here's kind of how you make soap and also a fatty acid. If you take a fat, this is called, this is a triglyceride triglyceride okay so it's basically um, three esters this squiggly line implies a whole bunch of carbons okay so imagine 18 22 27 carbons long huge huge amounts of carbons just carbons and hydrogens very hydrophobic okay and if you add so hydroxide like sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide what uh, actually happens is you actually cleave these bonds right here Alright, and the, the oxygen here actually adds onto there. Okay, and you form glycerol, which is this part of it. Okay, and you form this thing, which is a long, gigantic f um, fatty tail, because it's uh, uh, hydrocarbons, and an ionic head to it. Alright, so it's what's called a fatty acid salt, because you got the fatty part and you have the acid. So you've probably seen this word fatty acid, and this is basically what soap is. Okay, this reaction is known as saponification. So anyone that's ever made soap, that's what you do. Y you take fat or oil and you heat it up in, in a base. If you took 112 here, um, I believe they do a lab where you actually make soap. So you have actually done this. All right, some important acids, acetic acid. Um, that's, I mean, it's used as solvents. It's mostly used in foods. Um, it's also used if you want to make a volcano at a science fair. Everyone knows about that. Uh, fatty acids and fats and oils. Uh, b there you go. Benzoic acid is, f is a preservative. Look at that. Uh, it's also found in drugs. A dipic acid, not really something that's common, but a dipic acid is actually used to make nylon. It's a di acid. With nylon is a polymer. What the 6-6 six six means is that there are six carbons in a dipic acid. 
Um, it's basically uh, you got the carboxylic acid on one side, so and a CH2. Whoop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and this six is also a CO2H. What happened there? There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a dipic acid. It's a dicarboxylic acid. The other six is you uh, react it with an amine that also has six carbons in it. So that's what that six six means. Um, a phthalic acid is used to make polyester. A phthalic acid is right, and you attach an alcohol to that side to make an ester, and it's a polymer, so it's a it becomes a polyester. Synthesis review. These are things we already know. Um, oxidation of primary alcohols um, to aldehydes. Okay. So if you take a primary alcohol and aldehydes, you can get a carboxylic acid. Cleavage of an alkene with KMnO4 gives you alcohol. Uh, sorry, carboxylic acids. Ozonolysis of alkynes. Um, you can do um, a benzylic oxidation uh, to also get a benzoic acid. Uh, these are four reactions we've already seen. We're going to see them again. So if you take a primary alcohol, okay, you can use bleach um, or you can add, you know, like CRO3 and acid, which, by the way, that's what you get when you mix this. If you take this and mix it together, that's the compound you get. Or Na2Cr2O7 and H+. Okay, so this plus any of these strong acids um, you will get the carboxylic acid. Okay. Um, so primary alcohols or aldehydes are commonly oxidized with chromic acids uh, to give you the carboxylic acid. All right. Uh, potassium, permanganate uh, potassium permanganate can also be used. It's a little safer because you're not using chromium, but your yields are lower. Um, this is oxidative cleavage of an alkene with concentrated uh, potassium permanganate usually have to heat this with a little bit of acid in it um, and you can get the cleavage. This is a reaction that we've learned. All right, just cleave that bond. Depending if you have an H here, remember this part, if you have the H, goes to the carboxylic acid. If you have two R groups, then that part goes to the ketone. Just depends on what you have. Cleavage of a triple bond with ozone gives you two carboxylic acids. We've seen that. Um, and this is the benzylic oxidation. So whatever carbon group, whatever alkyl group you have here, um, you can oxidize to form the carboxylic acid. Those are review reactions. Okay, this is also something um, we, we uh, did this when we did the synthesis of ibuprofen. We made a Grignard and then added it to CO2, carbon dioxide, the, the dry ice, all right, the Grignard attacks gives you the magnesium carboxylate and then you acidify to form the carboxylic acid. So this is a convenient way if you want to add a carbon onto your molecule and make a carboxylic acid. Okay, that is through a Grignard. So Grignard reagents react with CO2 to produce after protonation a carboxylic acid. This reaction is something that's called CO2 insertion and increases the number of carbons in the molecule by one, which is what I just mentioned. Okay. Hydrolysis of nitriles. I think we learned this last chapter. If you have a nitrile right here, and if you add acid and water, um, we actually talked about the mechanism. It um, it forms a um, uh, kind of like an imine, a hydroxyimine compound, which then gets hydrolyzed off to give you the carboxylic acid. Okay, so here's kind of a synthesis. You're adding the carbon SN2 fashion. This is SN2. give you the nitrile and then uh, add acid and water to form the carboxylic acid. Okay, so basic or acidic hydrolysis of nitrile produces a carboxylic acid. The overall reaction starting with the alkyl halide adds an extra carbon to the molecule. Uh, oxidation of alcohol does not change the number of carbon atoms. Oxidation of cleavage of alkenes and alkynes decrease the number of atoms. Carboxylation of Grignards and nitriles add a carbon. So all depending on what you want to do, if you want to add carbons, take away carbons, or don't want to change carbons, that will kind of tell you which reaction you would want to do.